How much better are your customers at objecting than you guys are at overcoming objections? I want you to get rejected all day long, and at the end of the day, you're not gonna be scared of it no more. You cannot stop me, I'ma make it to the top spot, see, call it coming in, I'm cocky. You cannot break me, this world's mine for the taking. Got an itch, man, I'm making, oh, I'll keep my head down and grind. Every single one of you, think about everything bad you've ever done in your life. Think about everything you've ever been in. Every one of you are immensely qualified to help people with all the things that you've gone through now to help people who have gone through those same things. If you drank, now you know how to talk to people who drink. If you're a freaking shithead and you betrayed people before, you know how to talk to people who betray people. And you know how to understand and identify betrayal. You also understand that some people that betray people, they're the most loyal people after they go through something like that. They don't like that. They don't want to go through something like that. They never wanted to be that way. It's like the stove. They said it was hot. You touch it. And you're like, Shit, that is hot. Listen, the reason why I love people is because every one of them is different, but really they're all the same. People love certainty. People love to feel significant. People love to feel important. People love to feel like they matter. This is all the secret to winning, dude. Look, I'm going to ask you a question. Where is your team going to find all of these things that I'm talking about? They're going to find it in a leader and whoever that leader is, they're going to go to war with them. They're gonna work harder for this person. They're gonna care more for this person. They're gonna build something big with this person and they're never gonna leave. And if someone does, good. Just keep loving more people and keep doing what you're doing. You get it? One day they'll look in the mirror and they'll say, God, man, nobody ever treated me as good as they did. And I, and I messed that up. That's the key, guys. This is how we built our company. This is why we're taking over the world. And I don't care. You're gonna make mistakes as you go through this, but the key number one is self-leadership. You have to change yourself before you can change anyone else. So this belief system, let's talk about money for a minute. I said, how much money can you make? Whatever you think you can make. I don't care what Braden says you can make. I don't care what Talon says you can make. I don't care what the other guy in the other solar industry says you can make. I really don't give a shit. The question is, what do you think that you can make? Once you make that decision and you take ownership of it, you do what I did. I was 20 years old. And I said, well, okay, well, I just hit the two and a quarter, 250 number. I said, I'm going to break a half a million. Bless you. And I did. I hit 500 grand when I was 20 years old. Guys, I'm going back to 1999. Do me a favor real quick. I'm 44 years old in here, okay? What year did you guys graduate? I graduated in 99. Some of you were born in 99, okay? I want you to think for a minute. Money in 1999 and in 2024, that was 26 years ago, there's a difference in money. Guys that used to make six figures in 1999, that was a lot of money. They're like, oh my God, you make 100 grand a year? Whoa, this dude's rich. Only the news people make 100 grand a year because we would watch the news because social media didn't exist. So that's where the famous people were on TV. It's just different now. Dude, they print free money. It's everywhere now. Hey guys, we'll get back to the video in a sec. If you're watching this video because you want to level up in life and business, then one thing you got to do is optimize your sleep. One in three people worldwide reported not getting enough good sleep every night. A big part of the why? Mouth breathing. Luckily for you, our sponsor, Hostage Tape, is your best friend when it comes to sleeping. If you're like me, you've probably also struggled with everything from insomnia, dry mouth, restlessness, snoring, headaches, sore throat, and even waking up with mental fog and grogginess because of mouth breathing by sleeping and didn't even know it. Poor sleep affects essentially every area of your health, wealth, and happiness. With hostage tape, you simply peel off a piece of breathable fabric, place it over your mouth before bed, and voila, several hours later, you wake up feeling refreshed and energized. If you're ready to feel focused, clear-minded, and energized, go visit hostagetape.com backslash Elliot and get yours today. Thanks to Hostage Tape for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the show. Do you know what my commissions were per car when I sold? Anywhere between $100 to $300 per car. Imagine every time you got sold a solar system, if you got paid $100 to $300. You'd have to work really hard to make as much money as you want to make. Am I right? You guys get paid way more than that. Am I correct? Yeah. Guys, listen to me. You know why I love car salesmen? Because you gotta be a dog to make a lot of money. You gotta beat that pavement, you gotta be deadly on the phone, you gotta be dangerous, but you don't have to go door to door. That's why I respect you guys. Because in the auto game, we do cold call people, right? But at the end of the day, most of them come in. It's just a closing ratio, I just shut everybody down. If you got an idea, you got an itch, I'm gonna shut that ass down. If you come in, don't even look at me. You're in the service department, you're walking over here to get a drink from the water uh, fountain, you look at me, I'm gonna sell you something. That was me, I was a dangerous son of a bitch. 
But I would have loved to went door to door. That just wasn't my game. My game was automotive. Does that make sense? But now you guys have your vehicle. I had mine. Now I'm making 500. By the time I was 22, I was making 800 grand. Now I want to tell you what happened. This is where I had this aha moment, this epiphany bridge. Where from where I am to where I wanted to go was I wanted to become a leader. This is me. I'm making this 800K. And they're like, bro, we need you to lead our whole team. You're the best salesman in the company. You know how to close everybody. If you were in charge of all these people, there was like 50 salesmen, they could all raise their income. They could make more money and you would get paid a lot. And I'm like, yeah, dude, how cool would that be if I could teach? Now I've been competing with these guys for years, dusting their asses, right? I mean, destroying them. But I was, I was also running sales meetings with them. Like you sell 10 and I sell 80 but I'm also motivating you and running my own sales teams with you on the, on the floor, but I was a salesman, not the boss. Does that make sense? So I had some respect with my team because I was never disrespectful to anybody. I cheered people on, hey, you got three cars out, good job. You won't always stay at three cars. Okay, I started at three cars too, okay? You just gotta work your way up. After time, they told me they wanted me to become a leader. Now I'm gonna tell you, all you guys got promoted in here because you were good at selling solar, am I right? Why did you get promoted? Good looking? You guys ain't that good looking, okay? You're just like me, you guys are pretty ugly. Okay, why did they get promoted? Why did they promote you? You're good at selling. Okay, why did they promote you? I'm good at what I do. Okay, good at selling? What about you? Um, yeah. good at selling. We're all good at selling, weren't we? Now, you get in charge of all these people. I'm gonna ask you a question. How many of you have another person on your team that outproduces you? Come on, raise your hand. If somebody outproduces you, why don't we have a lot of hands? That's the problem. If you're the leader, your job is to make people better than you were. I had to learn this right here. So after I went at 23 years old, 22 years old, I made 250 grand as a manager and I went back 300 grand or 500 grand. I'm like, I just got a demotion. And you know what I realized? That I was good for me. I knew how to crack my head open. I knew how to get in my brain. I knew how to put myself in my shoes. I knew how to tie, listen, if you wanna change anybody's life, just so you're aware, this is where people are, this is where they wanna go. Everybody wants to be successful. The question is who's gonna help them get there and how are they gonna get there? Does that make sense? Do you guys all hear me? Number one thing you need to find out about every one of your people is what's their why, what, what, what pushes them? Not what's their goal, right? I wanna know their goal, their goal's here, but what's their why? Why when they wanna wake up at five o'clock in the morning, right? Will they freaking wake up instead of sleeping in? Why when they hit 20 doors or 80 doors and they get their freaking face slammed in every door, why would they go knock the 81st door with a good attitude again? See, I'm gonna tell you this. Me, emotion. I started to realize that if I didn't tie some emotionalness to my goal, that honestly, I was gonna slow down. So the whole time, I'm gonna tell you this story really quick. I'm gonna tell you where I tie my emotion to. I come from a broken family. My dad and mom were married seven different times by the time I graduated school. So what were we taught? To quit. I'm not a quitter, so I'm not gonna quit. So I tie emotion that I'm breaking my bloodline and I'm not gonna be a quitter like my mom or dad. I want you to write down right now, or think about at least, who do you wanna become and who do you not wanna become? Who I don't want to become is something more important than who I want to become. I don't want to become anything like my mother. I don't want to become anything like my father. I don't want to become anything like my, my last blood iron. I don't want to become anything like my family. You need to decide who do you not want to be like. Can you think of someone? You need to tie yourself to that. Also, who do you want to be like? You guys have all been through some shit, right? If you haven't, I feel sad for you. It's good for you to hurt. It's good for you to, to have stress. It's good for you to have some kind of misery in your life so you can understand it. I go all the way through school, and when I graduated, I was like, dude, I'm gonna figure out how to get rich. That's why here, all I wanted to do was make money. Corvette, I became a millionaire at 22. I had a million cash in the bank at 22. I had everything they said I couldn't have, and, but I had a hole in my heart this big. So the art of achievement and the art of fulfillment is important. And I didn't understand the art of the fulfillment. Dude, realize this. I want you to hear me. You're a leader. Your job is to get somebody to make money. It's called heaven on earth. I'm going to teach you how to make a lot of money and I'm going to, I'm going to give you a good life. And I'm going to show you how to raise your standards and be a good person. And by the way, if, if the things that I'm saying to you right now don't make sense to you, 
I'm sorry, man, it sucks. You just missed out on a, on a massive opportunity to become a multimillionaire, to build your name, to be a badass, and to grow a badass team. I feel sorry for anybody that's not paying attention. I feel sorry for anybody that can't mature in this room right now and understand what I'm saying. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Dude, the smartest people in the world, like me, at 39 knew that I don't need to go do what you did. I needed you to tell me what you did. And I was so good at selling, I could sell myself to be in your shoes, feel what you felt, why you went through it, and I didn't have to go through it now. Because I, I listened to you. See, when you guys are listening to me right now, and I tell you, they told me I could make a buck 25, I made a buck 25. They told me I could make 225, I made 225. Then I doubled it to 500, and no one else did. And at freaking 22, I was making more money in the United States than any other car salesman in the country. How? I was a loser. How can a loser do that? Because once you find something you're interested in, you become dangerous. So what is y'all's job? Your job is to do two things. Number one, wash your team's brain. Wash their brain, unprogram them, everything they know. Hey, I'm glad, everything you've been through, you had to go through that to get to where you are now. But now I'm gonna wash your brain. Now I'm gonna reprogram you. Now I want you to understand a different set of beliefs because your set of beliefs will determine where you go. And we're now gonna wash your brain and now we're gonna brainwash you with new information, with new experience, with new people. That way next year you can be different. Do you get it? And then you ask people, can you be different? Can you change with me? And I make them write shit down, like the person that can self-correct is forever wealthy. Can you change you when you know you need to change? Do you want to be rich? You got to change yourself. Bro, I can't change him. Only him and him alone can change himself. I can't change you. I can't change you. I can't change that kid. Only you can change you. At 39, right, I'm gonna fast forward, I freaking took this big ass pay cut here, okay, and I learned that I had to make people better than me. So you know what I started doing every day? Started training every freaking day. Why do we train? Training is either boring or it's fun. Explain the value in training. Hey bro, the reason why we're gonna role play right now is because you hit doors left and right, and every time you hit a door, you need to show up at that door like that's your house, you own it, and that's your family, you get it? That's your house, that's your door, you own it. They've already made a decision they wanna save money, wouldn't you agree? Everybody's made a decision they wanna save money, so they've already made a decision, everybody uses energy, they believe inflation is real, now I just gotta show up, make them like me. I gotta show up, make my words flow like water. I gotta show up, make sure they understand that I'm a pro. Dude, listen, I gotta make sure they see something in me and I can make a relationship with them that they couldn't make with anyone else. I gotta be able to do that. That's why we practice. That's why we train. That's why we role play. That's why we practice going knock, knock, because we practice mastering strangers. For a living, we master strangers all day long. If you guys wanna make your guys good, say, hey, I'm gonna take you to the mall. Go in here, shake every person's hand. Look, I would take him to the mall. I'd say, bro, just go walk around the mall, shake everybody's hand. What's going on? How you doing? Hey, what's up? Andy Elliott. Great to see you at the mall today, man. What are you here for? What you picking up? They're like, well, why would I do that? Because you're going to get awkward. You're going to feel weird. You're going to have people say, I don't want to shake your hand. I want you to see that. I want you to feel that. I want you to get rejected all day long, and at the end of the day, you're not going to be scared of it no more. That's the secret. See? You don't have to take people to the doors to train them. Just take them to the mall. They'll say, why are we here? Because you're going to go shake 500 people's hands. We are, we are going to, today, we're not going to make money, but what we're going to do today is going to make us more money than we've ever made. Taking training out, when your back's against the wall, you'll fall to your lowest level of skill. Does that make sense? If you don't practice shooting your gun, but you have a gun in your home for protection, if a bad guy breaks in, what does it even matter? You probably can't even shoot him anyways. You're like, oh, got my gun. Dude, Jane never even shot it that often. I mean, if he's better at shooting than you, he's gonna kill you. And by the way, how much better are your customers at objecting than you guys are at overcoming objections? Your people go around and tell people no every single day, am I right? You guys go and tell people no all the time, am I right? How good are we at getting people to say yes? We need to practice harder at getting people to say yes than people normally in their life say no. Does that make sense? 
Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are, set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.